George Bruno with the 21 Convention Patriarch Edition version of the 21 Report. We're talking to Texas Dom. How'd it go there on stage today? That was fun. I enjoyed the heck out of it. Excellent. So This is your second time on stage. It is. I've had, I've, I've enjoyed my 21 Con experience. I mean, yeah. this has been a lot of fun first time, and now to this week has been good, too. You are such a revered member of the team now. It's almost like it's it's as if you've been here 10 years. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think I'm the oldest member of the team. Yeah. So I yeah. don't know. Um, I'm, I'm having fun with it. Uh, the guys this morning, you and a couple other guys brought everybody up, and I and I brought them down. I crashed them down. I told ah. them all all the things that uh, they'd be ready for that might that might uh, go wrong. Along the cold the way. hard truth. Cold hard truth. But if you know what to look for, you got a chance of, of, of correcting it before it You're happens. You're not caught off guard. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, your material at TexasDom.com. Uh, last, I don't want to talk about your speech. Okay. Let's talk about. Other things. Sure. I know there's other things that you can talk about. Let's let's chat about that. Yeah, I um, I think uh, my last year's speech in October was um, on dominance and submission, which yeah. is kind of what I write on. Yeah. So if you go to texasdom.com, you're gonna, you're going to see a lot of articles on just general masculine subjects, things that you would see in any red pill type forum, but there's also a lot of articles that are talking about um, submission of your girl and, and you know how to lead that DS lifestyle. And I know a lot of people think, oh, it's 50 shades of gray. It's all that crazy, kinky crap, this, that, and the other. Yeah. But it's not. Okay, yeah. it can be, yeah. right? If somebody really wants to go yeah. down that road, yeah, yeah, they can have all the fun they want. Sure. But at the, at the core of it, it is a strengthened, tightened relationship between two committed people. And so um, it's the way that we basically saved our marriage five years ago. Mm -hmm. We were headed for divorce, and now we're still together, we're strong, and things are going well. Yeah. But the, the principle of this whole thing is that I lead and she follows. Yeah. And for too many years, uh, the king had abdicated the throne. I mean, I just wasn't leading properly. And you know, a good woman is gonna see that her family is important, and she's gonna see that her husband's not leading, and she's going to be forced to take up the reins. Yeah. And she's gonna resent the living heck out of you yeah. because of it. And so I think that's where a lot of divorces happen. I think that's where a lot of it comes to play. So us correcting it, and I give her all the credit, she, she discovered she was doing some soul searching on the internet and trying to look up things and figure out why she is the way she is and why she was unhappy. And she came to the conclusion, she stumbled on a Christian women, submissive women's site and decided that she fit the criteria. She's like, wow, I, I really don't want to make all the decisions. I want to stay home and plant flowers and bake cookies and make yeah. sure that the house is nice. You know, why am I working and why am I doing all these things that I never really wanted to do that much? And, you know, it's, uh, it's been quite the, the change of direction for us. But it gives us the tools that we can use to correct situations instead of letting things fester. We talk a lot now. I mean, I'm rambling here, but um, in, the, in the Dom sub world, you know, it's got three basic foundations, maybe four. Uh, communication is key and you got to have a lot of trust and, you know, Men want to be respected and women want to be loved. And you got to understand how these interplay with each other. Mm -hmm. And so when you start communicating your needs back and forth to each other, you're not trying to read minds anymore mm -hmm. because that's a, no one can do it, right? We think, right. well, if she loved me, she'd be doing that. Right. Right. But she doesn't know that. She doesn't know what you're thinking. Mm -hmm. And so we check in with each other a couple times a week. We don't talk about the kids, we don't talk about the grandkids, we don't talk about work, the dog, house. We talk about us. How are we doing? What's going on? And I'll ask her questions, and then I shut up and listen because she's got all my answers. If I can just pull them out of her, and those discussions are literally free flowing, and we can say anything to each other. Yeah. There's no, there's no consequences. Yeah. And so we tell each other the truth now. Hmm. Um, oddly enough, two married people telling each other the truth. Isn't that something? Go figure. Yeah. Right. So that's that's the basis of what of what we do and what I write about. And so, yeah, the, the kinky stuff and the, the that's icing on the cake. The yeah. great sex, and I'm telling you, it is great sex. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be all the crazy stuff that everybody saw in Fifty Shades, because that was out there. That was yeah. not the way this really is, yeah. right? Or it can be, but it's not the way it is. Um, the idea was for us is to be able to, women want to be dominated in bed. I thoroughly believe that. They want to be ravished. They want to be made to feel beautiful. Mm -hmm. They want to be wanted. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, we, we laugh about it, but 
the man who takes control in the bedroom and has his way usually leaves a very happy woman in a right. big puddle of mess just waiting to yeah. she can't even get out of bed yeah. kind of thing right yeah. and so that's the basis for any good any good marriage is going to be great sex if you're not having great sex chances are the marriage is not going to last and so these give us the tools and the fun and that kind of thing and we just go off in our direction so so it it keeps romance going absolutely yeah yeah we're always doing something usually by by the time people are in their 50s and in their golden years, I, I don't know if fifties are considered golden years. It's at least the beginning of the golden years. Okay. Uh, that things start to get stale and boring. So maybe this epiphany came at the right time for you guys. We were headed for divorce. Is that right? Absolutely. Because uh, I I would already got on my path of self improvement. I was already getting in shape, losing weight. Yeah. I knew I was going to be out of here. Yeah. And you know, what's the old line? You look in the mirror and say, "Would I screw that?" Yeah, right, right, right. right. And you go, mm, you know, probably not. Yeah. So you start correcting your stuff, and then all of a sudden the dread kicks in on her. Yeah. And it's classic Red Pill 101, right? You start taking care of your life. She starts to try to keep up. Sure. And, and even though it's a little fighting and bickering as that was going on, once she figured out how she could be happy, she asked me, will you do this? And I'm like, oh, heck yeah. I didn't even know what I was agreeing to. Mm -hmm. But the more I studied it, the more I realized that's who I always have been. Mm. I've always been that guy. I just didn't realize how important it was for her to feel that, hmm. to her to feel that I was in control of the situation, you know. Can you recognize in other couples how you were at one time? Can you see other men that are, can you see marriages that are on the verge of yeah. crumbling and you think you might have an answer for them? Yes, and how do you approach somebody on that, right? You know, you, you yeah, I see you're struggling here, read this, <laughs> you know, and we, we do that with Rational Mail, the book, right? We, we give that to men that are in, um, in crisis mode a lot of times. Um, I, I hope at some point, well, I don't hope, um, I will have a book on DS lifestyle here, mm -hmm. hopefully by October for the next 21. Yeah. And that's going to be a book that I'm going to be able to hopefully give some people that are receptive to it. But it's like anything else, until you're ready to make a change, until you want things to get better, you're not going to do anything. Would that be considered like a beginner's guide? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Because I've had a lot of men come up to me from the speech that I gave, which was heavy on the DS back in October. Yeah. And they asked ask me a lot of questions. I get a lot of emails. And it's like, how do I introduce this to my wife? And how, how do I do this? And how do I do that? And when they come to understand that what they're going to get out of it is this unbelievably strong, tight relationship and then, because initially all they're thinking is the crazy sex. Oh, yeah, I want to have all this sex all the time because that's what guys crave. They're, that's what they're not getting. And you can spot those guys, right? They're out with the family. They're at the Target store or they're in the yeah. parking lot or whatever. And you can just look at the dad and you go, he's not getting laid. Yeah. yeah. The guy hadn't gotten laid in weeks. Right. You know, he could just, just written all over his face. Right. You know, so um, once the wife realizes that she's got to respect her husband, if, even if initially she doesn't think he deserves it, and the husband's got to realize he's got to love his wife, even if he thinks she doesn't deserve it. Right. And you get this positive upward spiral going when both mm -hmm. people are kind of giving the other one what they need. And then all of a sudden the wife realizes that uh, the sex is pretty good for her too. Mm -hmm. She's getting a lot out of this. Mm -hmm. So it's always the question is, is like, yeah, the guy's getting all this great sex. What's the girl get? Well, she's getting some pretty great sex too, but, yeah. but they're both, that's just the icing on the cake. Mm -hmm. They're both getting this, this deep connection that didn't exist prior. Mm. And it's the connection which is what makes it all worthwhile. What is the uh, time frame as far as how fast do you think can the adoption of this lifestyle or philosophy, how long would it take to start to see hope in a relationship? It depends on if both people are embracing it or not within a couple of weeks if both people want it, yeah. right? If they'll, if they'll practice the, the basic concepts and they'll start talking more and telling each other what they need. You know, one of the funniest things you can do as a new couple is they have these things that, um, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up a half step. A lot of people look at this as being just kinky sex. That's yeah. how they first, but, but everybody likes sex, right? And so maybe there were some things that they were thinking about years ago, but they were too scared to talk to their, their man about or vice yeah. versa. And so all of a sudden, you, they have these things on the internet you can download called a BDSM limits list, a checklist mm -hmm. of all these different things, right? Of, 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 of these terms that 
we don't know three quarters of them, right? So you're yeah. you're googling this term, you're going, holy crap, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> that's not it. That's not me. She goes, no, that's not me. Goes, okay, X. Yeah. You know, how about this term? Does that sound like something? She's like, mm, I'm kind of interested in that, maybe. Yeah, you know, yeah, I am too. Let's see if we yeah. we like that. And so you go through this list together, and you laugh, and you Google all this stuff, and you crack up. And what you're doing is you're. But it's not a contract. No, no, no. It's well, just kind of a. And people have contracts. Okay. Right. So um, no, it's. I personally believe I'm married. Sorry, hit the mic. I personally believe I've been married for 30 years. I have a contract. It was a marriage license. Yeah. Right. I don't really need a contract with her. Gotcha. Other people like to have the formality of a contract and a yeah. whole bunch of rules, and they yeah. they get into it. But there. But you know what? There's no one way to do this. That's the beauty of it. So if 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 Sam and Mary over here decide that they want to do it this way, yeah. God bless them if they're happy and it's working for them, right? Mm -hmm. And then on the flip side of that, this is going to, the viewers of this are probably going to be appalled, maybe, I don't know. Uh, sometimes it's the other way around. Sometimes it's the woman who's the dame. A. She's the one in charge, and, mm -hmm. and, the, and the husband is, is a submissive. And that seems rather odd to me. I'm accepting of it because that's how those two people choose to live. Who am I to tell them right. that that's wrong? That's how they choose to live, right? right? So it's, it, it doesn't float my boat. But uh, it's, a, it's an exciting dynamic to change if they both want it. Sometimes the issue is only one of them want it and the other one really doesn't. But he plays like the woman thinks she wants it. She's read all this fantasy literature and stuff. And, oh, this sounds great. And the husband's thinking, I'm going to get blowjobs all the time. This is great, right? But then he doesn't do all the other things he's got to do. He doesn't fulfill his responsibilities in this role. He doesn't, he doesn't lead. Right. And now she's frustrated because yeah. now she's doing nothing but giving a lot of blowjobs, and she's yeah. not getting her needs met in return. Right. You know, I, 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 there's nothing wrong with having a good LTR or a good marriage and taking care of your wife. I mean, men, listen to me. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, a lot of guys in red pill that think, you know, screw her, I'm going to the gym, and I'm doing this, and I'm doing that. But if you want your marriage to work, you know, you got to find that sweet spot we were talking about this mm -hmm. morning. You can't just be way out here on the pendulum. And you were way over here previously. you you, you got to still take care of your girl. I mean, she is, should be your most prized possession. And people just recoil. How can your girl be your possession? My girl says she's my possession. She mm -hmm. says, I want to belong to, to Sir Tex. Mm -hmm. You know, that's who I want to be with. Mm -hmm. You know, he's, he's my, someday she'll even play slave. He's my master or mm -hmm. something like that, mm -hmm. you know. But we spice it up. We keep it, we keep it fresh. And I know some younger guys out there are going, oh, guy, old guy, 57, talking about crazy sex and all that. Why not? I'm telling you, when you guys get to be 57, I hope you're still having crazy sex. Because why not? Right. You know, you don't quit wanting it and maybe your wife does. But if you can present it properly, you know, maybe uh, she'll get reignited as well. Yeah. So why give up? Right. What about single guys? Now, is that a um, is that something a single guy could adopt yeah. uh, and find a single woman who has a similar philosophy? Yeah, there are some hookup sites that are geared towards this, but a single man who would adopt a dominant position in his own life, and that includes in the bedroom, is going to have a lot happier bed partners at the end of the day. You know, you realize that women aren't going to break. You know, mm -hmm. you can you can pound them hard. Mm -hmm. When I say pound them hard, I mm -hmm. don't mean like physically with a fist yeah. or anything. But, yeah. you know, um, and, the, and the three key words in all of this have always been safe, sane, and consensual. And it, those three words have to be there. I mean, you have to have talked about what you're going to do. Yeah. You're going to try something crazy one night. Hey, by the way, I'm thinking about this. What do you think? You yeah. know, let's let's talk about this a little bit before we get in there and freak her out. But but for a single man, and I've had talks with some guys here that have implemented some of the things I talked about in October. And they're like, man, sex has been mind boggling good. Because all of a sudden the woman is there and she is the object of his desire and she's, she's like the Play-Doh thing. She's, she's being formed in all kinds of positions. He's telling her what to do. He's demanding that she does this and that and the other. And she's submitting and she's, she's making him happy and she's getting hers too, mm. right? And so the single guys can definitely pick up on this. Yeah. Can women talk, talk to other women about this? Yes. Um, my wife has been part of submissive women chat groups. Okay. The, I mean, you, know, you know the internet, right? There's a there's a listserv or a chat group for everybody. For everything, right? yeah. And so she has a lot of friends that are submissives. And I remember the years ago, um, I told her, hey, I bought a flogger. And she was like, oh, my God, what? I bought a flogger, you know, leather ends, you know, with not a cat of nine tails, but just a heavy, heavy thud flogger, you know. 
And she freaked. She was like, you, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. So she got online and started talking with a couple of her, her girlfriends. And they were like, oh, no, you need to try that. You need to let him out. You need to just keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. Now it's her favorite toy. Oh, boy. Right? Yeah. So, again, you, you talk about these things. You have support. Yeah. yeah, but the girls, they love to talk about it. Trust me, they are all over it. And the three things you said, safe, sane, and... Consensual. Consensual. Explain and each one of those things. Well, um, some people would, for instance, oh, okay, I want to tie her up and I want to put a rope around her neck. That's not safe, mm -hmm. right? There's way other ways to pin her down or do whatever that are, that are safe that you're not going to have to worry about asphyxiating someone, right? right? And killing them, for God's right. sakes. Um, sane, I mean, <laughs> you, don't, you don't want to go too crazy, you know? You don't want, okay, I'm going to... I don't know. I'm not going to go there. But, but there, you could... There are some crazy people out there, really crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and then the consensual thing in the era of Me Too and everything else that's going on right now, you know, you better be in a consensual relationship. Yeah. I've even had couples that have created a videotape together mm -hmm. and put in a safe time and date, stamped it somehow, put in a safety deposit box because they were afraid that maybe the wife goes in for a medical exam, the doctor sees some bruises on her or something and then calls the authorities. Oh, okay. Because some women like to be bruised. They're masochists. Yeah. They yeah. like to feel the pain, right? right? And that's just their kink. Yeah. And so that's the thing I've, I've come to learn. It's like, I don't judge anybody's kink. I don't right. care, right? What right. works for me works for me. I don't give a crap what two people do behind the bed. Right. You know, I, I don't care if they're gay. I don't care if anything. It's just, yeah. it, it doesn't concern me. But there are legal, there are people out there that would say what we do is abuse. Mm -hmm. And how do you protect yourself from that? You know, is well, isn't that what consensual is? Consensual kind of prevents the accusation of right. abuse. Right. But, yes. No one's a victim. No one's a victim. And then I've seen people at dungeons where the singles are in there, and they, they negotiate their placing, what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's consensual. And there's Wait, a, you said you've seen people where? In a dungeon. What's a dungeon? Uh, exactly what it sounds like. Uh, there are dungeons. There's a dungeon here in Orlando that's actually one of the top ones in the world. Um, there's one in Houston that we've been to. Uh, Atlanta's got a top-notch one. Dallas has got one. People go in there and play. There's St. Andrew's crosses in there and spanking benches and you name it. It's a bunch of kinky, crazy son of the guns going in there. And you will absolutely see things you did not want to see. And so there's usually a room somewhere. I had no idea. Yeah. No, it's out wow. there. Okay. It's out there. All right. So two singles could actually hook up at one of these things and, yeah. and play yeah. Right. And there's no penetration. There's no genitalia being touched. It's, it has to be proper. Right. Yeah. But it's still it's their version of play. Right. And that may be how they meet, how they hook up. But that okay. has to be consensual. There's even dungeon monitors that walk around and make sure that everybody's playing safe and not especially not someone's not getting a blowjob or something, right? Yeah. The, this so. is, there's got to be a documentary about this. I mean, I just, Maybe that's the next Bruno man on the street type yeah, thing. We'll, right. we'll go hit this place before we leave town. <laughs> that's funny. Wow. All right, my eyes have yeah. just been opened. Yeah. Okay. But, I thought well, I heard everything. He's never going to interview me ever again. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Mr. Well, Producer, it's in the dark, but I can see him blushing over there. <laughs> Yeah, you know what? It's 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 just good wholesome fun. Uh, yeah. It's around like-minded people. My girl, she, she really says it best. We've got some couples that are also that that are DS as well. Yeah. And she says nothing's more fun than to have just even just a dinner party. And we're yeah. not talking about nakedness. We're not talking about swapping. We yeah. don't do any of that stuff, yeah. right? But for her to be able to come sit in my lap and reach down maybe and rub my crotch or something in front of and just in in a group setting where yeah. we're all we're all kind of in that same similar lifestyle. But we don't swap. We don't do any of that kind of mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And so she finds, and I find, um, those kind of friends. And, you know, we just, that's the people that we like to hang out with sometimes, yeah. you know? So, and they make it nice, you know, dinner party with the, you know, the girls will sometimes do this whole slave thing where they dress up in the, in the, what do you call them? The uh, toga type things, yeah. where the Roman type stuff, yeah. and they're serving their men. Yeah. And they come around to serve us, you know, and that kind of. So it's it's all about making it fun, right? Yeah. Life is boring if you don't sure. do something to make it not boring. Sure. Right. So there's just all kind of good stuff. Yeah. Very interesting. Yeah. Again, my eyes are open. I learned something today. Well, <laughs> That's right. Um, and I and I stumbled into it. Any age? Why not? Are they? I mean, I mean, are there? Much younger people Absolutely. there, much older people. I, in fact, I think most of them are younger. 
Is that right? Most of them are younger. Okay. We're, we're definitely up there at the upper end of the bracket on the okay. age group for sure. Okay. But uh, it's just, like I said, it's I, we stumbled into it. But the funny part was is that we never really communicated our sexual desires to each other. Uh, things that I wanted to do, oh, she's going to think that's pretty fucking weird, right? Yeah. You yeah. know, and that kind of thing. And she had some of the same things. But we look back about it from the day that we first got together. I mean, she would, she would sometimes call me daddy in bed and things like that. And I always thought that was kind of weird. I'm not her daddy. You know, yeah. What's that all about? But yeah. that's part of her. She has a lot of little girl in her and her yeah. personality. And so yeah. you, you look back now over the years and like, we could have been doing this 20 years ago right. if I had just read the signs. She was putting the hints out there. Right. And I was too stupid to pick up. On them. Wow. Yeah. So. so you feel that this kind of, uh, is the word save too strong of a word or is that an accurate word? It saved your marriage. No, this, this lifestyle saved our marriage because it gave us tools to use to fix our marriage. We both wanted it. Yeah. And that's the key. We both had to want it yeah. badly. Yeah. And in fact, when she first hit me with this bomb that she thought she was a submissive and this, that, and the other, we actually, I was dropping her off at the airport to go see the grandkids for a couple of weeks. So we had like two weeks apart where she was Googling and researching and I was researching and doing my stuff because yeah. I disagreed to it without even knowing what I was agreeing to. Yeah. Like, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Right? So um, it gave us time to research and we got back together. And, uh, you know, there's always ebbs and flows. There's always good times. There's always going to be some stumbles, a step back, that kind of thing in any relationship. And we're no different. Mm -hmm. um, but now we course correct so much quicker and we communicate mm -hmm. crazy good like we didn't do before. What if there's someone out there watching this and they, they're at that place where the marriage and relationship is troubled and they want to go there. They need something. It's do or die. It's... If something doesn't happen, it's going to be over. How would you counsel them? Um, I've, I've answered this question a few times. I think if you if you sit down with your girl, first of all, if, if, if a man is at that point, his woman is at that point too. She knows. She's not stupid. So, you know, some of the ways you can kind of bring this thing up is you can talk about how her grandparents lived. You start the conversation talking about how things were maybe back in the 50s. And I'm not yeah. talking Tradcon. I'm just talking... Yeah. Grandpa was in charge. Grandma made eggs and bacon every morning and took care of the house. And maybe maybe worked, maybe didn't work. But the the idea was you start saying, that's a lifestyle. After you've, you've explored it and, you, and you've, you've gone back and you have these happy thoughts about how your grandparents and your great-grandparents lived and the yeah. old house and the farmhouse and all this, right? And so everybody's in this good mood, feeling those good chemicals. And you say, you know, there are people that live like that today. You know, and, and those people are, are living a similar, they might call it head of household, they might call it a 50s lifestyle, but, you know, the husband's in charge, and the, the woman just basically gets pampered and spoiled, and you present it that way because submissive women are needy. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, they want your time and they want your attention because they're going to give back. And so, <laughs> you know, you realize that uh, you can you say, hey, let's just give it an experiment. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make the decisions. Yeah. And you're going to do these things around the house, this, that, and the other. I think a, a big stumbling point right now is, is so many women have to work. Yeah. They don't have to work. They choose to work. Yeah. Or the feminist imperative have put in their heads that if they don't work, they're not a real woman. You know, they're, they're not. If they want to stay home, I mean, gosh forbid, stay home moms get crucified by their female friends right. at work. And so a lot of these submissive women have figured out that, hey, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom now. And I'm going to take care of the king's castle and wait for the king to come home. Mm -hmm. And some people have taken the income hit on purpose. They've downsized, went to a, a less expensive house yeah. because they wanted to try something a little simpler because what they're doing now isn't working. Yeah. And what's the old adage? You keep doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. It's just sure. insanity, right? Sure. So um, there are ways to approach it. I've had other people say they went and rented Apple TV rented Fifty Shades of Grey and watched it together and started talking about some of the stuff. And, yeah. and that's how they sparked it, talking yeah. about it. You know, um, previously, when I, we were, before we, we got in our DS, um, I was reading Fifty Shades of Grey on my iPad in bed one night. We were still kind of button heads still. And she's like, what are you reading? I'm like, I'm reading Fifty Shades of Grey. She goes, why are you reading that trash? And I'm like, well... Millions of women are rubbing off reading this reading this book every night. I want to know why. 
Yeah. And this is like, like the fastest selling paperback book of all time. Yeah. Right. So I wanted to know why. Plus, I also thought I'm about to be single. I want to know what all these women are seeing in this thing. There's something sure. going on here. Right. Sure. And then, it's, you know, the, she claims she doesn't remember telling me that. Right. But uh, true story. And uh, now she completely understands. And that's the thing. Once people get into this lifestyle, they all laugh about Fifty Shades of Grey because as, as a, first of all, it's just a terrible written book and all this stuff. It's just chick porn is all it is. And um, the people that are in the lifestyle look at it like it's a joke because it was the guy was so screwed up in the movie. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's, it's, it's not the way it really is. Yeah. But sometimes it's just that, that spark and gets the sexual chemistry going between right. two people talking about it. And next thing you know, they're in bed together. And, right. and that's another way for a man to be able to bring this up with his girl. And quite often, I, I did a little uh, informal survey with a group I belong to, a Dom subgroup that, I, that we were part of. And I think about 70% of the women bring it to their men. Think about that. They've read, they've thought about it. Why am I not, you know, why am I not, they're reading this book going, why am I not getting this good sex? Why doesn't my husband have a helicopter and a penthouse? And, you know, there's no, that's not realistic, but there's other things he can do. He can start being a leader again and that type of thing. And, and submissive women expect their man to be a leader. And we all talk about this at every 21 con. We have to lead our families. We have to lead our women. Mm -hmm. We have to lead our communities. So I think the, the whole dominant submissive lifestyle truly dovetails nicely into red pill awareness. Mm -hmm. um, I've talked to Rolo about this extensively. And the thing is, is that when you're a dom, we talk about holding frame in red yeah, pill. Sure. Uh, you, you maintain your frame no matter what's going on with your girl or anybody else around you. The trick here is, this is the ultimate frame, being a, a, a dominant in a relationship. But the key is your girl is expecting you to hold frame. She's demanding that you hold frame, yeah. right? And in most marriage, red pill, you know, aware marriages, the girl may not even know about what frame is, mm -hmm. but, but and they're just wondering what's going on with her husband. The submissive expects her man to be in control. Mm. And they're not happy if he's not. If he starts backsliding, they get very unhappy because all of a sudden they're not getting their needs met anymore. It's a whole lot more than sex. Sex is amazing, cherry on top. There's a whole lot more underneath all of that. So, and that's why I'm writing the book. So. No topic is off limits here on the 21 Report. For some of you, this is a first time hearing this, as it was for me as well. This is the first time I've ever had a conversation <laughs> like this. If you want to know more, contact. Yeah, uh, TexasDom.com. I also have, I mean, I answer emails. I'm on Twitter at uh, TexasDom1, at TexasDom1. Uh, some, some bastard got at TexasDom, and he's not doing anything with it, so I never could get that. So, uh, yeah, look me up on Twitter, 21 Studios. You're seeing this video, so you know how to get a hold of me probably. So, uh, and I answer emails. I, I, I'm, I've not gotten to the point where I'm getting so many emails that I can't answer them, so I'm still answering every email that comes through. So if you've got questions, you know, just give me a call. Excellent. You know? Thank you so much. Thank you, George. I enjoyed it. Absolutely.